Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. Um, welcome to another video from uh, C++ for complete beginners. In this tutorial, we're going to look at outputting text in C++. So we're going to edit this uh, hello world.cpp file and we're going to see how we can output text in it. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to start a new project. Let's go to File, New, C++ Project and select Hello World C++ Project and let's call this out, Outputting Text. Now at, at this point you're, you're probably kind of feeling that um, the, the main program looks really crazy and um, a really good thing to do is type it out yourself from scratch. Let's in fact delete all that and I'm going to type just the kind of essential basic program myself. So, whoops, <laughs> what did I do then? I'm not sure. So you need to start with um, a hash sign like this. I think in um, America this is called the pound sign but um, in Britain anyway we call it the hash symbol. So you need a hash symbol and the word include and then a open um, curly, uh, no, sorry, an open angle bracket. And when I type the open angle bracket, Eclipse automatically puts in the closing angle bracket. And in the middle of that, I'm going to type IOS stream. Um, so IOS stream actually stands for input output stream. And by the way, don't worry too much about the stuff I'm telling you here. I, what I'm trying to do is get you familiar with this main program little by little. But uh, the important thing here is just to be able to complete the task that I'm going to give you in this tutorial later. So um, what this is, it's actually a file that we're literally taking from somewhere else and we're putting it into our main file before the build is run. And that's what's happening behind the scenes and that's what include does. But don't worry about that. So we need that. And then we need to say using name space standard and you finish this line with a semicolon. And very often um, you'll need to finish lines with semicolons in C++. That, that's something that you gradually get used to. When you start you always forget them and you miss them off. Uh, but um, with practice you'll just learn to automatically put the semicolon at the end of lines where they are needed. And after this, you can type int space main and um, an opening and closing round bracket. So again, Eclipse put the closing round bracket in for me. And then we put in an opening and closing curly bracket like this. So I'm going to type the opening one on the same line as main and then hit return. And you can see Eclipse has put the closing one in for me. Uh, some C++ programmers prefer a style where um, this bracket, open, the opening one, will go underneath main like this instead of on the same line. Um, but I, I think this, this style is, you know, it's definitely gaining popularity more and more, I think, so I'm going to follow this style. And pe people who like brackets on the same line as, um, as the function name here, they get very annoyed with people who like them underneath and the people who like them underneath get annoyed with the people who like them on the same line. But anyway, let's let's just forget about that. Now once I've done that, I'm going to type in here return zero semicolon. So this is a, a statement in C++. We call this a statement and statements have to finish with a semicolon. And again, this isn't going to mean much to you at the moment. Uh, the important thing at the moment is just to type this out yourself um, just to start gaining a little bit of familiar familiarity with it. And that's actually a legitimate C++ program, but it doesn't do anything. So once you've got this far, you can um, go to Project, Build Project, and it should build without any errors. It should just say Build Finished. It's in blue here, and it should be fine. Now to output text, we use something called C out. We're going to type C out space and then two sort of, um, uh, well they are kind of angle brackets, they're the same as this symbol here, but in this context we're, we're using them not as a bracket but as a sort of chevron. So following that we leave a space and in, in double quotes, and Eclipse has put the closing double quote in for me, and it must be double quote not single quote, you can type something 
like this is some text, we'll stop. So between the double quotes, you've just got ordinary text, whatever you like. And after that, we're gonna put in um, another chevron space and then end le and then semicolon. So end le stands for end line and see out, well, um, I'm not sure what the C stands for, C++ for all I know, but uh, this, this means the out refers to the fact that we're going to output text. So you think of this, this chevron, as sort of sending this text to this thing here. Um, and um, this is sending this end line, end le also to this object here. And end le, it actually um, puts like um, a blank new line after your text. And it also flushes the buffer. <laughs> and what that means is um, text can actually accumulate kind of in your program without appearing on the console. And uh, this end alert, one thing it does is it flushes the output so that whatever saved output um, it's actually kind of saved up by your operating system. This will tell your operating system that it should output all the text that's waiting to be output. So if you didn't have that there, technically it's possible that um, this text might not appear at all. Okay, so, and you'll notice the see out, it must go before this return statement and it must be within these curly brackets here. And this, this thing here is actually a subroutine, it's a function. It's a block of code that's going to do something. So don't worry if, if any of that went over your head. Like I say, type out the main program yourself from scratch and try to get your version working and you will probably miss things out and you'll have to go back and look at the automatically generated version. And by the way, I think the automatically generated version, it has this stuff at the beginning here which we can expand with a plus sign, it has that stuff. But these are just comments, so you don't need these. You can, you can leave them off. Let's get rid of that. So I haven't put them, you don't need that stuff. And in, in my clips, um, the comments appear as green. Uh, so they're not vital to the program at all. Let's now build this. Let's go to project, build project. And um, let's, let's run it. Actually, I've already built it, so that didn't really matter. Let's select the actual project. Um, yeah, you need to make sure you've got the right one selected and click the run button and yes I want to save it and it runs and it says this is some text so again it's, it's a big achievement to get to this point and um, so um, don't think that you're wasting time typing this out yourself it's really not a waste of time you've got to become familiar bit by bit with this main program and um, we're gonna let's let's have a look at what else we can do without putting text which so we can put more of these see out statements in here and what's going to happen is that um, C++, it's going, to, um, it's going to execute all the statements. So this is a statement, it ends in a semicolon. This is a statement, it ends in a semicolon as well. And it's going to execute all the statements one after the other within this main program. So within, these, within this main function. Uh, so between this bracket and this bracket. Um, so this is where your program will all start and it's going to go through line by line here and execute everything you type here between these brackets. So let's put another see out statement in. Let's say see out chevron. This is some more text um, full stop. Of course, wh wh what you actually type here doesn't really matter as long as there are no weird symbols in that will confuse C++ somehow, like another speech mark or something like that, then you can type whatever you want in here, basically. Try typing different stuff. Let's put in another chevron and end le. And let's run that. And yes, save it. And so there we've got a program with two lines of text. And the, the thing that's creating the, um, uh, we call it a carriage return, the thing that turns the next line into a new line. Um, so after this line, there's a carriage return. Uh, we call it a carriage return because um, when we used to have typewriters, to, to create a new line, you had to roll the kind of thing with the paper on and then move it back 
or all the way to the left and that's called a line feed and a carriage return. So here technically we've got a line feed and a carriage return after this sentence. Um, but we, we can actually output text without, um, without the line feed and carriage return. So to do that, let's, let's put some, um, some text, let's put it at the top here. Let's, write, let's type C out chevron to kind of um, left pointing angle brackets and let's type um, starting program dot 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 and then let's type another chevron and end and semicolon so um, sorry not end flush <laughs> yes okay so what flush does is it um, tells your operating system to output this text, but it doesn't create a um, it doesn't create a line feed. Um, I think I was thinking end. I think in Visual C plus plus it used to be end and not flush, but I might be wrong about that. Um, but in any case, flush works. So it's going to flush the text. It's going to tell the operating system, "I've output some text. Please um, clean out your memory and actually output the text from it. Don't save it up." Um, but it's not going to create a line feed or a carriage return, so it's not going to go to the next line. So to see the effect of that, let's run this. Click the Run button, and you can see you've got, we've got starting program, and then immediately it says, this is some text. So because there's no endler here, we didn't go to a new line before outputting this. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so try that, try that for yourself. Try flush and try putting multi try creating a program with multiple lines of text in like this. You can mix lines ending in flush with lines ending in endler. It's absolutely fine. And one more thing that I'm going to show you here is um, you can also output multiple bits of text with one C out. And and at the moment that's going to sound like it's pretty useless, but you're going to see later on that that's actually extremely useful. So let's go here maybe, and let's type another C out, another chevron, and let's type, um, uh, I don't know actually, let's type banana. And then we'll put another chevron, and in, in double quotes again, we'll, we'll um, type apple, full stop. And then we'll have another chevron, and then let's type orange, and then finally, let's type chevron and endler. So we'll save that and run it. And what, what, what do you think is going to be the result of running this? And you're probably going to guess that it's going to type banana full stop, apple full stop, orange. Might have a full stop there as well. But um, there's something not quite right with this. And we'll see that. So let's yeah, select the project, click run. And you'll see that there's no space after banana, apple, or orange. And that's because we didn't tell it to output a space. So um, to do that, well, we could do something like put in another chevron and literally have a pair of empty quotes with a space between them. And then we'll get a space after banana. If you look at that carefully, it all makes sense. So there's banana, and then we're outputting the space, and then apple and orange. So we're outputting that, then we're outputting this, then apple and orange. But let's, let's get rid of that, put it back how it was before. The easiest thing to do is just put a space after that full stop within the double quotes. Because um, normally in C++, blank space is ignored. The blank space is there um, to help you make the program visually appealing and visually understandable so that you can easily see how it works. And um, we'll put one after the full stop of apple and after the full stop of orange as well. And uh, let's try running that. So it should look pretty good. And there we go, apple, banana, apple, orange. You might wonder what would happen if you didn't have this flush there, would it still work? Uh, or, if we, or if we didn't have this endler there. Let's try it. And it probably will work, let's see. Save it and click run. Yep, yeah, so this text is actually still coming out, but um, 
there's no real guarantee that it will come out unless you have either Endler or Flush after it somewhere. Um, because especially if you've got a big program that's producing a lot of text, if you want the text to appear immediately, you need Endler or Flush. We say it's flushing the buffer because otherwise the operating system might save up a big wadge of text and then output it only when it's got a huge big wadge of it. But this forces the operating system to output all the text straight away. It's flushing its buffer. The buffer is like an area of memory where it's saving your text. And uh, we say flushing the buffer like cleaning out the, the buffer, the memory, and outputting everything that's in it. Okay, so have a go at that. And before you do, there's, there's one more really, really, really vital thing that I'm gonna mention here. And that is formatting. Because you'll notice that um, in my main program here, I've, I've actually got a tab before each of these C outs. So um, between these brackets here, between these two brackets, all the statements are indented with a tab. And um, you, if you've typed it without that tab, it still works. So if I run this, yeah, it still works. But um, this isn't right. It shouldn't be considered right. Yes, it's a working program. But uh, indentation, correct indentation in C++ or any programming language helps massively for you to be able to understand the program. And one of the key things that beginners tend to do wrong is they, is they get the indentation wrong. And then they can spend hours, even days, trying to figure out what's wrong with a program when if the indentation was right, they would have seen instantly what was wrong with it. So it's, it's vital that you get the indentation right, absolutely vital, just as important as remembering these semicolons and stuff. Even though in bad indentation won't stop it compiling, it's still gonna be a rubbish program if you don't get the indentation right. So between curly brackets like this, you indent everything with a tab. And one thing you can do is, if you right-click your program, you can go to, um, let's see, uh, it's here somewhere. We've got a source format, there it is. So if you go to source format, and there'll be a shortcut key for that as well, um, and select that, it automatically formats your source. So on my Mac, um, I think it's Command-Shift-F, let's just get rid of some of that and do Command Shift F and it's something like Control Shift F on Windows. So there's no excuse for bad formatting because even if you get it wrong yourself, you should make an effort to get it right when you type it. But even if you get it wrong, you can automatically format your source. And boring though that may sound, you may think I'm going on about this unnecessarily. It's vital, it's absolutely vital. So use the auto formatting whenever you've written your program and try to write it with scrupulous for formatting in the first place. Pay attention to how it looks visually. Try to make it look nice. Try to make it break down into logical blocks and get tabs where you need tabs. So between these curly brackets, indent everything one tab. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. And uh, until next time, happy coding.